Ms. Hildebrandt, I've been handed a written document, a plea agreement with your signature on it. Did you sign that document? Yes. And you did that to represent to the court that you have read the document carefully, that you understand what you've read, that you agree to all of the terms that are set forth in that written document? Yes, sir. It's official. Jody Hildebrandt pled guilty to abusing the young children of her business partner, Ruby Frankie. We're going to break down six revealing details from her plea deal as she now faces potentially decades behind bars. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Well, it happened. Jody Hildebrandt pled guilty to four counts of aggravated child abuse. This is for the physical torture, the injuries, the emotional harm that she inflicted on the children of her business partner, Ruby Frankie, the two young children, Russell and Eve. Now, remember who we're talking about here. Jody Hildebrandt was the clinical mental health counselor from Utah who was providing life coaching services through an organization called Connections Classroom. And she was doing this alongside her business partner, Ruby Frankie, who was listed on the website as a certified mental fitness trainer. Frankie, of course, was the once popular YouTuber. She started the Eight Passengers channel in 2015 alongside her husband, Kevin Frankie. This documented their lives along with their six children. They had over 2 million subscribers. It was very popular, but things became very controversial when viewers started noting disturbing themes in the videos, like really strict parenting techniques. In fact, Child Protective Services and police, they were even called on the family at different points in the saga. But you come to find out that about a year and a half ago, Ruby and Kevin separated. Ruby's working with Jody. They're making all these videos together. I've shared with Ruby numerous times that anger is actually one of my most favorite emotions. <laughs> when I first started getting to know you, she's like, anger is my favorite emotion. I'm like, I don't know what I'm dealing with here. <laughs> And then you fast forward to August of 2023, and Hildebrandt and Frankie are arrested. This comes after Frankie's 12-year-old son, Russell, escapes Jody's house, runs to a neighbor who calls 911. Police respond. They find Russell and his 9-year-old sister, Eve, malnourished, Russell sustaining injuries from being tied up, really, really sick stuff. The case was relatively quiet for a few months after their arrest until we get notice that there are two hearings scheduled for Hildebrandt and Frankie. These are called waiver hearings. Now, Ruby's hearing is first, and then we learn she decides to plead guilty. Ms. Frankie, how do you plead to count one aggravated child abuse, a second-degree felony? Guilty. To count three aggravated child abuse, a second-degree felony? Guilty. To count five aggravated child abuse, a second-degree felony? Guilty. And to count six, aggravated child abuse, a second-degree felony. With my deepest regret and sorrow for my family and my children, guilty. That was on December 18th, and then on December 27th, Jody Hildebrandt follows suit. Then, Ms. Hildebrandt, how do you plead to count one, aggravated child abuse, a second-degree felony? Guilty. And to count three, aggravated child abuse, a second-degree felony. Guilty. To count five, aggravated child abuse, a second-degree felony. Guilty. And to count six, also aggravated child abuse, a second-degree felony. Guilty. Now, we haven't had a chance to really dive into Jody Hildebrandt pleading guilty. It's one thing for her to do it in open court. But we also have her plea agreement, this document that has been released. And again... I have to emphasize how big of a deal this is. I mean, this is major news for anyone who's been following this saga since summer 2023. Because we were wondering whether or not Jody Hildebrandt would go to trial. We even dedicated an entire sidebar episode on potential defenses for Jody Hildebrandt if she took this to trial. Things like mental health defenses, whether or not uh, she would put the blame all on Ruby Frankie. I tell you, they weren't great defenses considering you potentially had physical evidence from the kids. You have the fact that the kids were found at Hildebrandt's residence, so kind of hard to deny you didn't know what was going on. You possibly had the children testifying against her, and of course, the potential testimony of Ruby Frankie at trial too. So it's really not surprising that Jody Hildebrandt 
decided to take a plea deal and not take this to trial. But with that in mind, let's actually go through six of some of the more revealing details in this plea agreement. Now, a lot of this is similar to Ruby's plea deal, but there are a few differences that we're going to point out. And I'd actually like to start with what she admits to doing. And if you read Ruby Frankie's plea agreement, it's basically the same, but it's worth repeating. So, Jody Hildebrandt admits that between May 22nd, 2023 and August 30th, 2023, those months are important. We're talking about the hot summer months. You'll see why in a second. That she intentionally or knowingly inflicted and allowed another adult, Ruby Frankie, to inflict serious physical injuries upon Ruby's children, nine-year-old Eve and 11 to 12-year-old Russell. Probably you have that age range because he maybe had a birthday in between this abuse. And like we saw in the Ruby Frankie plea deal, this included physically torturing Russell and Eve. Russell was forced to do physical tasks for hours and days at a time. These included wall sits, carrying boxes full of books, up and down stairs and working outside. Eventually, Russell was forced to do outside labor without shoes and in the summer heat. He was forced to stand in the direct sunlight for several days. Eve was forced to do physical labor too. Both children were denied food and water. In fact, Russell was punished when he secretly consumed water. Specific to Russell also is that he was severely tied up. The documents indicate that this happened after he tried to run away in July. His hands and feet were regularly bound. Binding included being tied to an adult until weights and handcuffs were used. But even more than that, the handcuffs cut through the skin and damaged his muscle and tissue. These injuries were treated with homeopathic remedies and covered with duct tape. We've previously reported on that there were cayenne pepper might have been used. But going back to nine-year-old Eve, the agreement explains how she was forced to work outside in the heat barefoot. She was also forced to run barefoot on dirt roads for an extended period of time. Her feet were repeatedly injured and she was repeatedly sunburned. These wounds were apparent by scabs, blisters, and sloughing skin. It's just horrifying talking about this physical abuse and listening to this. But then you have to think about the emotional harm. So that's another disturbing detail of this plea agreement. But in a way, it's especially pronounced when you think about Jody Hildebrandt. Plea agreement says that this abuse resulted in severe emotional harm to both children, but specifically that the kids were indoctrinated and told that they were evil and possessed, that they needed to be obedient and repent, and that these punishments were necessary and for their own good, basically, that they were acts of love. When you read this, how Eerily similar is this to what Jesse Hildebrandt, Jody's niece, told us about the abuse that they allegedly suffered at the hands of Jody when they were younger. So she strips you of identity, she strips you of credibility, and she isolates. And so she's saying, everything that you say is a lie. Everything that you say is, is manipulation. You're manipulating everyone around you. You're lying and destroying everyone's life. So for the sake of everyone else's safety, We're duct taping you. And when I spoke to Jesse after Jody Hildebrandt pled guilty, they talked about this mental trauma. The the emotional and spiritual abuse. I mean, it took me. I mean, I'm still in therapy every week for it. There's no. And that and again, it was almost 15 years ago and I'm still daily like I I mean, through this. This experience for months, there's been a, a tremendous amount of healing on my end. Um, which just goes to show how important um, accountability is for the victims. Right. Um, but no, I mean, this doesn't, the, the, the invisibility of harm almost, it, it makes it even worse because you, you know, if, he, if those kids didn't have those horrifying physical marks on their bodies, would, have this, would this ever have been intervened? So it's not only the emotional and mental trauma of being abused at such a young age, But being told, this is for your own good and you aren't a victim, that can be very hard to move from. All right, we're going to get back to Jody Hildebrandt in a second, but I want to take a minute to talk about something that happens all the time. Workplace injuries. If you get hurt at your job, slip and fall, mechanical failures, negligence of your coworker, something hits you, 
you're going to need a trusted law firm in your corner. Well, enter Pond Lee Hockey Giordano, a firm that is a heavyweight in the industry and that wins all different kinds of injury cases from workplace to accidents to social security disability injuries. They have a track record of recovering over a billion dollars for their clients. They have won over 100,000 cases. They have 250 years of combined experience. How about that? You can check out Pond Lee Hockey Giordano at pondleehockey.com slash LC sidebar or by picking up the phone and calling them at 833-669-4043. All right, let's get back to Jody Hildebrandt. Now, I have to talk about something that we read in Jody's plea agreement, something specific to Jody Hildebrandt. What I'm about to tell you was not in Frankie's plea agreement. This is entirely attributed to Jody Hildebrandt. This is with respect to, again, nine-year-old Eve. The plea deal states, quote, the defendant, Jody Hildebrandt, either physically forced or coerced Eve to jump into a cactus multiple times. Wow. Forcing or coercing? Both horrifying to think about. A nine-year-old girl to jump into a prickly cactus multiple, not once, multiple times? Again, it's unthinkable. It's insane. It is just so disturbing. This was not something that we knew about beforehand, by the way. It also makes you wonder whether Hildebrandt admitted to doing this, Frankie confessed to witnessing this, or Eve herself told authorities what happened. Now, I say this cactus incident wasn't in Frankie's plea agreement, but remember, Frankie admitted to doing something herself too, something horrific. She admitted to specific instances of physical abuse of her own son. She admitted to kicking him with boots, holding his head underwater, cutting off his oxygen. No words to describe this, but she is no innocent party either, okay? She admitted to doing all this as well. Another important fact to consider in this plea agreement is what Jody actually pled guilty to and what was dropped. Now, this mirrors what happened with Ruby Frankie. So to be clear, Jody Hildebrandt pled guilty to four counts of aggravated child abuse, more specifically, child abuse constituting physical torture of Russell, child abuse resulting in severe emotional harm to Russell, child abuse resulting in severe emotional harm to Eve, and then, with respect to Eve once again, child abuse resulting in serious physical injury, including any combination of two or more physical injuries inflicted by the same person, either at the same time or on different occasions. And just to clarify, to make it all clear with respect to that last charge, it says that Eve, quote, was forced to work outside in the heat barefoot. She was also forced to run barefoot on dirt roads for an extended period of time. Her feet were repeatedly injured and she was repeatedly sunburned. When examined on August 30th, these wounds were apparent by scabs, blisters, and sloughing skin. Additionally, the defendant either physically forced or coerced Eve to jump into a cactus multiple times. I know we talked about that, and I'm repeating it again. Important for you to hear, but also important because that charge, as I said, specific to Eve, but you can see how you get that combination of injuries there to support that last aggravated child abuse charge. Now, the charges that were dropped, there were two. We saw the same thing in Ruby Frankie's case. These were aggravated child abuse constituting starvation or malnutrition. I suppose you could argue that maybe they were duplicative of the other charges. Doesn't seem that it would have been very hard to prove at trial, but also it's not surprising that certain charges are dropped in a plea deal. In fact, here is the prosecutor, Eric Clark, explaining more about this. If our plea offer had been there is no plea offer, plead straight up to all six, then the defendant has no incentive to go to trial. And, and, and we're not afraid of trials. We don't want to avoid trials. Trials carry some risk in that you don't know what the outcome is going to be, but but more so when you have victims that, you, that are having to go through the trial process, that's difficult. And that makes sense, right, to have a deal work out like that. But now let's move on to another difference between Jody Hildebrand's plea deal and Ruby Frankie's plea deal. And this one, also not that surprising. What do we not see in Hildebrand's plea deal? She has not agreed to be a prosecution witness. She has not agreed to testify against anyone else. Now, again, that's not surprising considering that there are only two defendants in this case. And Ruby Frankie, who pled guilty first, she agreed in her plea agreement to, quote, to testify truthfully against Jody Hildebrandt. 
And in return, the Washington County Attorney's Office agrees to remain neutral regarding future hearings before the Utah Board of Pardons and Parole. And that, in my mind, is the key to why Jody pled guilty, right? To have her co-defendant testify against her, that was going to be very, very, very hard to overcome. I mean, I know I mention this often, but to give you an insight into this, before Frankie pled guilty, her law firm, on the eve of this hearing, released a statement saying the following, quote, Initially, Ms. Frankie believed that Jody Hildebrand had the insight to offer a path to continual improvement. Ms. Hildebrand took advantage of this quest and twisted it into something heinous. Over an extended period, Ms. Hildebrand systematically isolated Ruby Frankie from her extended family, older children, and her husband, Kevin Frankie. This prolonged isolation resulted in Ms. Frankie being subjected to a distorted sense of morality shaped by Ms. Hildebrand's influence. Again, kind of gives you a sense of how much Ruby was going to turn on Jody. Now, Jody's attorney provided a different reason for why she pled guilty. Ms. Hildebrandt, my client has pled guilty today to four counts. She has done so because she takes responsibility for her, her conduct in this matter. Um, her guilty pleas, she decided to plead guilty before Ms. Frankie entered into her plea agreement or agreed to cooperate with the state. She has pled guilty because she wants, she did not want these children to have to testify. She takes responsibility. And it is her main concern at this point that these children can heal, both physically and emotionally. We look forward to sentencing. That's all I have to say today. Now, could that be true regarding her intentions, regarding the schedule for when she decided to plead guilty? Maybe. I'll tell you someone who is very skeptical of this, Jesse Hildebrandt. When her lawyer came out and gave just the the most ridiculous comment to the press about how Jody is just, she pled guilty because she's just trying to, you know, take accountability for her actions. And she just really cares about the kids healing and all of this garbage, just complete trash. Um, That was pretty enraging. I mean, I can't imagine it actually changing anyone's mind or convincing anyone of like, like it's so obviously a manipulation tactic to save face. You don't believe in any way she feels bad about what happened? Not even a little bit. You don't get accused and like convicted of child torture and then suddenly are like, oh, I just really care about these children's healing. Like, that's not what happens. Okay. Finally, let's talk about Jody Hildebrandt's potential punishment. In the plea documents, Hildebrandt agrees to the following, quote, I know the maximum sentence that may be imposed for each crime to which I am pleading guilty. I know that by pleading guilty to a crime that carries a mandatory penalty, I will be subjecting myself to serving a mandatory penalty for that crime. I know my sentence may include a prison term, fine, or both. Goes on to state, quote, the defendant agrees to serve a prison term, And the sentences received for count one, count three, count five, and count six are to be served consecutive to each other. Now keep this in mind. Each of the child abuse counts carries a prison term of one to 15 years in prison. And the agreement states that the sentences will run consecutively, meaning one after the other. Plus in Utah, it's our understanding that they use an indeterminate sentencing scheme, which means that a sentencing range is set, like the judge will say, one to 15 years, but the judge cannot actually sentence a specific amount of years. So it's not like the judge determines how long Jody Hildebrandt will go away for, but rather the Board of Pardons and Parole that I mentioned before with respect to Ruby Frankie, they will ultimately decide when Jody Hildebrandt will be released. In other words, Jody Hildebrandt could be going away potentially for decades. And based on this conduct, I wouldn't be that surprised. Now, I told you I spoke with Jody Hildebrandt's niece, Jesse Hildebrandt. Well, they provided a bit of interesting insight on this penalty, on this sentencing as well. Let's take a listen. Yeah, so I was able to speak to the DA a little bit that evening, and he informed me that the likelihood of her getting maximum maximum sentencing is incredibly high, that she's most likely going to be getting the 60 years. Wow, that uh, we were wondering that because again, you know, 15 years is the max on each 
yeah. um, each church. And, 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 you know, look, the way that we understand it as well, and it, from Utah laws, it really isn't the judge who sets it. It's more like it, this is what the punishment is, and um, it's up to a board to determine if shove or be granted parole. So, I mean, that's yeah. our understanding about it. Yeah, so he also told me that it's about eight months from now that that board will be put together and that's going to be like the first parole hearing will be in, in as little as eight months. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're going to be focusing, like what the DA said to be focusing on, like having a written statement of, of harm and um, showing up to those, to those hearings. And hopefully that this will, this after this first one, that it will be pushed years down the line. So again, not sure what that comment exactly meant. As we mentioned, it's really up to the board of, pardons and paroles, but a little bit of an interesting insight to where the prosecutors are thinking. Really, what an end to the Jody Hildebrand saga with this plea deal. And when I say end, I mean end. When you sign a plea deal like this, what does it say? Jody Hildebrand in this deal is giving up her right to a jury trial, to call witnesses, to testify in her own defense, her presumption of innocence, her right to appeal her conviction. But Jody Hildebrand signed this voluntarily under her own free will. So there you go. We will, of course, make sure to continue to follow any updates in this case, and we will monitor what happens at sentencing on February 20th. That's all we have for you here on Sidebar, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. Speak to you next time.